not a lot of stories in the early days, particularly of women coming across uh, pornography in fire stations and experiences of sexual harassment. Women often seen in relation to sexuality, so um, the equality officers have there were basically two roles for women, you were either a lesbian or you were a fire tart, is their description. Um, so there's this assumption, and some of my research was looking at uh, comparing the experience of heterosexual women and lesbians in the fire service, uh, and there was an assumption that well, if you come into a male-dominated job, um, you, you, you must be a lesbian. So in some ways, women said that this, this um, because it was a highly masculine, masculinized culture, in some ways it might be easier for lesbians to fit in, but there was also um, a strong risk of harassment and bullying, and many women told me stories of how um, being a lesbian could be an additional reason uh, to experience discrimination. Um, racial harassment uh, was very, very common when uh, BME firefighters en entered, particularly in the early 90s. Verbal abuse was common, so-called uh, banter um, directed at BME firefighters. Similarly, um, LGBT, um, LGBT firefighters were um, experienced har harassment. Um, and I, I won't, I'll never forget an interview that I did with a, um, a gay uh, firefighter who um, was in tears in my office telling me sorts of stories of the kind of bullying that he'd experienced uh, on the fire station. Um, and part of the difficulty was that they couldn't necessarily rely on support for the, for the main union reps at that time, who were described sometimes as, as, as part of the problem. So there weren't, I think in these early days, the sort of structures of support that the union had put into place. Um, the difficulty of complaining, because as you, as you know, it's very important for people to try and kind of fit into the, uh, the watch and work with their colleagues. So if you were experiencing difficulties, the last thing uh, people want to do is to to, to, to make any sort of complaints and be seen to be provoked. So for a period, it was sort of seen that there was this revolving door, so that there was some kind of success in getting more women and BME firefighters in. A lot of them didn't stay because of the problems they were experiencing, <coughs> so there was this sort of revolving door. Um, the thematic review, many of you will know about, 1999 was when the Home Office began to look at equality issues, <coughs> or at least did a major report on equality issues um, in the fire service. And it, this was very damning in terms of the equality um, environment and, and the culture. They talked about the failure of leadership um, on equality at all levels in the fire service, so you know, right from, from the very top down through the fire service, which was um, categorised as institutionally sexist. So it cautions as if it said it might be institutionally racist. I think the evidence from people who have spoken to suggests that that was there. Um, a very macho, laddish culture they described, uh, where homosexuality was an absolute taboo. Um, strong, um, a, a strong opposition to women, they, they found among the uniformed staff um, still at that, at that stage, um, but they, they commended the FBU role in equality um, in, in the fire service. So clear leadership, and particularly active in pursuit of equality issues over recent years, and most of the officials have been really accepted. So FBU have definitely seen as a leader in putting equality and diversity issues on the agenda in terms of uh, progress in the fire service. <coughs> um, so the service, uh, just, just a bit of information, but some figures, um, the Home Office set targets uh, to have 15% of women in the operational staff by 2009 and 7% of the ethnic minority staff in the workforce uh, across the board. Um, clearly, not you know this, these targets were not being were not being met. So we still had similar targets being set. So these were kind of being monitored every year. Um, in 2008, <coughs> sort of updated targets in the national framework uh, were by 2013, women will be 15% of uh, new operational entrants. So obviously, recognising the difficulties in in the sort of small numbers of recruitment that was going on, uh, the, the target was about new entrants rather than overall numbers, um, and to try and get uh, proportional recruitment for um, minority ethnic <coughs> staff, and also um, paying attention to parity in uh, retention and progression rates. I don't know whether you can see this all too well, but the, uh, this shows that there has been progress in, in the numbers, so the red the red line at the bottom is women firefighters, so it's gone up from around 2% in 
closer to uh, just over four percent for some national figures. Um, and you've got this is the yellow red line is all all women um, in the fire service. And then for some reason these two lines have come out this, this the same colour, but the one at the top is um, ethnic minority all staff, and the one below it uh, is uh, minority ethnic firefighters. So again progress but still not to very very large large numbers so from two percent up to around four uh, percent um probably haven't got time to go through a lot of these figures in detail but this is just to indicate that there is kind of the, uh, variety regional uh, variety within these figures so in london the figures for women are higher and also some small, uh, regional brigades smaller brigades do have higher proportions of women even though the overall numbers are fairly small uh, scotland 3.8 2013 Wales about 4%. Interesting when I tried to get some updated figures from Wales, they told me that uh, they're not collecting figures anymore. Um, I'll just come on to that, that in a moment. Um, but that, that sends, sends a message, I think. Um, in London, we've obviously got a higher proportion of BME firefighters than in uh, other parts of the country, but not reflecting the local population. Um, and similarly in, in other regions, so what's been doing Again, not not the population, but uh, certainly increased numbers compared to what they were. Um, so, what, what the FBU has been doing then, what the progress the FBU has, has made um, on the equality and diversity in the fire service, for example, uh, negotiations on maternity pay, getting um, improvements on statutory pay into the grey book, uh, and then some of the grades include local examples of maternity pay. I hope, hope these are all still current and they haven't done, they haven't been uh, <coughs> revoked, but uh, nine, nine months on full pay for that year um, and 18 weeks of pay for so, so very kind of solid uh, work on progressing uh, these issues with, with brigades um, and also getting maternity pay for retained staff uh, rather than, than just kind of going, you know, being removed from uh, their the, the role. A best practice document on facilities, which of course uh, provides not only um, a model for facilities for women, but also uh, for all firefighters in terms of having uh, much better facilities on, on stations and uniforms and that sort of thing. Uh, they've worked, uh, the policy sections in particular have worked with a uh, whole range of brigades on um, equality training, on ensuring fair recruitment practices, um, and in, in promotion. So kind of very, very uh, engaged negotiations uh, with employers to keep to keep on top of um, equality issues and to uh, really press forward. Um, and then working at government level, so particularly during the um, the period when there was the, the new Labour were in power, there was um, a lot of joint working uh, by the National Equality Forum uh, with working with government. Um, of course, modernisation, the modernisation um, <coughs> agenda is, is a, uh, obviously one that's going to be um, covered in, in the book. And there are some, you know, there is some evidence that there is kind of scope for progress on equality and diversity <coughs> issues as part of modernisation, for example, um, on sexual orientation. It's perhaps easier to get, to get in, employers to pay attention to some of these issues. Um, under this kind of modernisation agenda, but of course there's the other the other side to it, um, and the uh, National Women's Committee uh, have been very concerned about changes that came that was um, part of the, the proposal related to pay uh, review the, the Bain report, which were trying to change shifts, and they said they felt that they were using women as an excuse to attack conditions of service in some of their proposals to achieve changes. Um, and there's also been research looking at uh, some of the changing requirements for um, uh, pers personal qualities and attributes, yeah. <laughs> um, focus on non-physical skills, and some have said, well, including soft skills rather than an emphasis typically on physical skills may be um, beneficial for women, but actually a lot of women have said, well, this can be seen as a barrier to promotion, because these are often criteria that are harder to measure and far more open to individual judgments than the previous uh, technically based criteria. So I think that's um, contentious. Uh, there. Um, so the FBU struck 
structures. Um, so a, a great long tradition of um, the, these three different equality groups. So the first Women's Advisory Committee uh, met in London in 1989, um, and the, the National Committee was established in 1990, uh, 1999. The Black and Ethnic Minority members had, had their first school at uh, Walby Hall in 1995, which has gone from straight to straight since then. Um, and the, the Lesbian and Gay members began to meet in London in around 94, 95, and then uh, soon after established a committee. Um, and then there was the establishment of the, um, the Executive Committee seats for women, BOE, and uh, later the LGBT group, um, which was seen as a very sort of significant and uh, um, important kind of recognition of the, the role of, of those groups and the uh, work that they were doing. Um, another key um, sort of policy that, that people have talked to me about, key change, was the all different, all equal policy been kind of updated regularly since, but of course it was a, a controversial step to remove automatic representation from members who are subject to allegations of discrimination, but it was felt to be a very uh, um, significant in terms of um, the, the, the union signalling their commitment to equality and diversity, which of course was in the, in the union rules. Um, and I think the, it, it, it's fair to say from, from what people have been saying to me that um, the FBU equality structures and equality organisation and the work that they um, have, have been doing, particularly sort of from, from the 90s and the, the 2000s, um, was, was kind of seen very, very positively by other trade unions and by the, by the trade union movement generally. Um, I have a quote here from, from Mickey Nicholas who says at the TUC, everyone applauded us because we got up and said we have now got a steering committee for black members in the FBU. <coughs> so I think recognition that uh, this was a time when unions were um, starting to have more self-organisation, focusing much more on equality issues. But for a union, you know, with, with the, the um, highly masculine culture of the fire brigade union and a union of this size to be sort of punching above their weight in a sense on these equality issues uh, was seen as a very, um, something that perhaps other, other trade unions uh, were envious of. Um, come to a more recent period, um, the coalition government in 2010 dropped the national targets for women um, and